Hello and how are you? Hey folks, it's Senator Briscoe coming to you live right here in St. Charles, Missouri. Yes sir, first state capital of Missouri. Yes sir, back in 1821 through 1826. That's when they were done it and that's when they, we had it. And it changed over to Jeff City. That being said, you know, today we're, is going to be blog number 174. That's right, you know, we're almost there. We're creeping up on that 200 mark. But we're creeping, we're creeping slow. But hey, 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 that's quite all right. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to tell you, that's all right with me. That's all right, mama. That's all right with me. I said, that's all right, mama. Oh, I'm going to let it be. Oh, I can't that, can't that, I'm not supposed to be singing. I know, I know, but hey, what's wrong with a little song, you know? And then a rhyme, boy, I tell you what, not only did I sing a song, but I made a little rhyme. Well, there you go, folks. I'm, I'm going to try to rhyme it up one. I'll, I'll kick off a song. I went off to the, went down to the river today, saw my log dog again. He was sitting there astray, and I thought he'd been washed away, but you could pet him on his head, then you could walk away and realize he was a log instead. So my log dog today at the river. There you go. Saw some other folks down there, and they, and uh, you can actually see him as a log dog again. It's a different angle you have to get to, but now you can still see him as a log dog so there you go that's talking about down here in St. Charles there at the uh, at the uh, uh, Blanchett's Landing boat uh, le uh, boat outlet there boat inlet yeah at the boat landing <laughs> right alright but anyway yeah there's a log dog down there and if you're looking at the other side of the log there from off in the distance and you look at it looks like there's a little people a person there you can see their eyes and their nose kind of looks like maybe a pig or something but it's either a pig or a people and they got some nice long hair on them but then they're wearing a log for a hat well there you go they're like a piece of log that looks like it was cut like for a fire a piece of firewood for a hat that's what they're wearing but hey, you know, it, it takes all kinds. Somebody saw it. We were sitting there looking at it. I was explaining the log dog to them. And, and well, there you go. There you have it. They uh, they saw it, and she was she was looking at the log from the other side. We Because I was on the other side first, and we were talking about it. And, well, I went down, down there and uh, mm, sat there and looked at it. And I got to seeing what she was saying. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Reap Bob. Yeah, they're talking about bringing down their party barge to launch it tomorrow and go out on the river now that she's dropping back down. Oh, wow, you know what? I, today I was, uh, my people on the uh, uh, handicapped accessible fishing apparatus, they gave me a call today. Um, <clears throat> looks like right now I'm not going to be getting the one that I had prior to the Easy Cast. On account the uh, motor on it this doesn't exist anymore, and yet, like I said, the motor I had before, it wouldn't really cast anyway. It was just kind of a waste of time to uh, mo the motor wouldn't draw anything in. It barely bring the bobber in, much less uh, a fish on it. So there you have it. So. Now then, uh, the guy that's making the uh, Easy Cast vans, Easy Cast from recreational, uh, from uh, uh, let's see, what are they called? Access to Recreation. Yep, it's an Access to Recreation magazine. It's out there for y'all if you want to um, have any kind of accessible equipment. They've got it in that book. And anyway. Uh, I think the book's put together by a gentleman named Ron. And, uh, nope, Don. Don's his name. But anyway, Don, i tell you what, if you call on their phone line, Don's going to answer. So, you know, if you want some real, you want some real, uh, um, service, you go to the man that backs his plan. That's right. 
Don put that book together, and Don's the man to to talk to about anything he's got. And right now, you know, they've came up with some new real motors, but the real motors that they have only work on an open face reel, and the Easy Cast, the um, Vans Easy Cast, does not uh, will only hold a, a closed faced reel. So it's either have somebody toss the uh, line out for me and set it in a in a pole holder which would be okay with me and use my uh, powerful reel to uh, drag that fish in with or uh, just go ahead and go ahead and, and uh, you know get the other the old thing but there's no motor for it the uh, um, so I'd have to use my old motor, which was kind of useless. So it would be like pouring water down a well, you know, a full well. Um, so anyway, we decided against it. So there she sits. I did receive some information from the uh, hospital today uh, so that I can do the uh, do their orientation seminar. I'm going to try to put one of those together real quick so that uh, everybody gets a chance to, uh, so that I can go and perforate my skills. Yeah, I'm going to, I'm going to go in and use my skills as a talk, uh, as a talkist, and I'm going to orientate the new recruits, the new um, so volunteer recruits. That's what I want to do. And who better than a volunteer? To, in, to infiltrate the volunteers than a volunteer themselves. That's right. That's the way I look at it. So, you know, you get you a volunteer to get up there in front of everybody and first things first, I'm going to have everybody go around the room and introduce themselves. And the only reason I'm going to do that is because a, as a volunteer, you're going to be face to face with the peoples. And if you can't talk within amongst a friends, a group of friends like we are, well, then you're probably not going to make one of the bestest volunteers, depending on the area you volunteer for. I mean, there are areas that we do have here at the at the hospital that you can volunteer for and put you kind of out of sight and out of mind, but that's totally up to you. You know what I'm saying? But it's better to be able to go out there and get acquainted with the folks. Let them know that you're here as a volunteer. You know, it's a good thing, and it's a good thing for you, and we're glad you came. Alrighty, that being said, I'm glad you all tuned in today because, well, I'm a talkaholic today. Yes, sir, I feel like I'm punch drunk with happiness. Happiness and talkahol. Yes, sir, yes, sir, yes, sir. I ain't, I ain't, I was really, you know, wanting to sing again, but I've been told that my singing voice is, uh, well... No, I don't care what they say. I like my singing voice, and I am going to sing. I done sang one. I just whipped off one there. I, I do that all the time. I just put put together a little medley and diddly, a little diddly 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 do, and I make out a little D. And uh, I put her out there and sing her for you. Because I was on the back, uh, back Katy Trail there, you know, on the back side by the river. And I was rolling down the river, looking at them logs floating by. I saw the big fat log and I said oh my well I figured it would just be a drift and we'd float on down the river but as it passed it just it wasn't a log it was something bigger well that there thing it scared me to death so it made me want to shiver I just had to get away from the backside of that river okay there you go I was reaching for it but hey you know, there, that reminds me of a story. You know, there was this guy one time. Uh, um, I'll tell you a little story about him. Uh, actually, his name was Jed. Well, he lived up in the hills down south of here in Missouri. Somewhere in Missouri, down in the hills. Um, could have been just below Missouri. In, in, uh, let's see, what is down south of Missouri there? Arkansas? Could have been Arkansas or Missouri, right there somewhere, but anyway. Um, he lived in the hills back up in there, and, well, it was kind of getting difficult for him to keep his family fed, so he went out a-hunting one day with his old dog named Duke, and, why, well, he shot at something, and, well, he thought it was a rabbit, but it turned out to be this 
black bubbling goo come right up out of the ground. That was oil, you know. Texas tea, that is. Some folks refer to it as that. But anyway, he done run back to the cabin and he said he said what he done and and uh kin folks was all gathered around friends and what not and they said why jed you better move away from here you better pack up your truck and you ought to move away to oh california somewhere how about beverly hills california and so they did they packed up their truck and they moved to beverly hills that is so anyway, they ran into some movie stars, and they had a swimming pool, cement pond in the backyard and everything. Oh, and then they, it was a wonderful, wonderful story, I'm telling you, tell you. Well, and then, after uh, the story got done, you know, uh, he was out there, and he was obliged to see you, and obliged that you stopped by, and he was more than happy for you to come back uh, another time to endure indulge in their happiness and their kindness to have you greeting them and so anyway somebody put together a little song about that story and i'm sure you know what that song is so sing along with all right well listen to a story about a man named jed poor mountaineer really kept his family fed then one day when he was shooting at some food up from the ground come a bubbling crew oil that is black gold texas tea well the next thing you know oh jed's a millionaire kin folks said jed move away from there california is the place you ought to be so they loaded up the truck and they moved to Beverly hills that is swimming pools movie stars the beverly hillbillies that's right starring donna douglas buddy Ebsen. Irene Evans and Max Bear. Yes, sir, those are the regular sto stars. Nancy Culp and I don't remember who played the uh, banker, Melvin Drysdale, but those were the norm those were the regular stars and the music was put together by Buster Flat and Neural Scruggs. They'd play that banjo and that get and it sounds something like Well, we all glad you came this week to this look. Oh, wait a minute. Well, we're all glad you came this week to this locality. Nope, that's not it. It's uh We hope you folks enjoyed yourself at this locality. Join us. No, that ain't it. I don't know the f back half of it. You know, that's one of those things. You forget the back half. I remember this one time, though. There was about these folks. They just took off on this little float trip. And they ended up getting lost. And they found themselves adrift on a small island. And well, when they got adrift on that small island, they didn't have nothing. I mean, it was a deserted island. And so what they done was they built everything they had. And then they, I mean, it is a heck of a story. They had a lagoon. And in that lagoon, they had fish and spaceships and weather balloons and radioactive vegetables all kinds of stuff. I think that that story went something like this. Uh, let's see, how did that story go? Just sit back there in a the chair and I'll tell a tale of a trip which started at this tropic port aboard this tiny ship. The mate was a mighty sailing man, the skipper brave and sure. Five passengers that sailed that day for a three-hour tour. A three-hour tour. Well, the weather started getting rough. The tiny ship was tossed. If not for the courage of the fearless crew, the minnow would be lost. The minnow would be lost. 
Now the ship struck shore on the shore of this uncharted desert isle with Gilligan, the skipper to a millionaire and his wife, a movie star, the professor and Mary Ann, here on Gilligan's Isle. So join us here each week, my friends, you're sure to get a smile from seven stranded castaways here on Gilligan's Isle. There you go, because I remembered the last part of that one. Alrighty, that's my time. This is Shenandoah Prisco saying, hello and how are you? You know, God loves you and so do I. So, be blessed and have yourself a great day and I'll see you tomorrow. Alrighty. Well, alrighty then, I'll be here. I hope you are too.